Con, the man who never sleeps. Look at that, it's got the right time and everything. Oh god. So anyway. Here we are, once again, Uncle Bill. One month since our last on the road video, which was a remake. One month later, yet another remake. <sighs> yeah. And this one, like, the trailer for this movie made everybody automatically hate it. Like, before they had any idea about it or anything else, I know that going into it, just by looking at the trailer, I never want to see this. It looks awful. And although people say that it actually is good, whoever made that trailer ought to be fired now. Yeah. Right now. Had like the worst cover version of Sweet Child of Mine you've ever heard. Makes the Sheryl Crow version, you know, awesome. Yeah, it was like the Inya version of Sweet Child of Mine. Or yeah. It's like some woman that you know didn't even speak English, they got the Oh the tide the So anyway here, Last House on the Left though yeah. is what this is, by the way. Here's the thing with this movie, Last House on the Left remake. I do not want to go see this movie. I'm burning out of horror film. <laughs> I do not want to see this. So here's the here's the thing that's gonna happen. I'm not even gonna to try to be objective about this. I don't want to see it. So if this is good, if I like this movie, then you'll know this movie is good because I hate it already. <laughs> so it has to win me over. Uncle Bill, we're supposed to be objective over here. No. You're gonna have all kinds of no. hateful emails on here. These guys are fucking douchebags. They make up the man before they go see the movie. I, I've tried every time to be objective about this and every time there's always douchebags right inside anyway so fuck you i hate i already hate this movie if this movie is even remotely worth the fuck i'm gonna say it's shitty it has to be the greatest goddamn movie ever for me to like how about that that ain't fair how about that if i like this movie you'll know it's great <laughs> So yeah, and Uncle Bill actually did make, uh, I guess it was an ultimatum, that if this movie is shitty, this will be the last on the road review we'll do until Halloween 2 or H2 or whatever it's going to be called. Yeah, because the bottom line is, the only shit that I know that's coming out is more stuff that's like on the fence, like this movie is, where it'd be like Drag Me to Hell. I don't think that's on the fence. I think that that's going to be fucking awesome. Yeah, I don't think that'll be awesome at all. Uh, the Haunting in Connecticut? Shit like that? No. Right, guys? No. What you say? He's puking up a tree. Like he's puking up a fucking tree stump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that movie does look sort of stupid. We won't be going to see that regardless of what happens. But uh, I just love that, though. What in the hell is that even supposed to be? <laughs> what the hell? That fucking thing comes out. Yeah, it's almost like Jackson Payne burping up cum. <laughs> so anyway, Last House on the Left. A lot of people put this movie over, though. I mean, that's the thing we need to briefly say on here. I would say a good 80 to 90% of people really like this movie. I mean, they a lot of them came in like Uncle Bill. 
and came out happier than you know a pig and shit. So we'll just have to wait and see. We're gonna head on up to the Riverfield Ten Cinema and check it out on this dreary Sunday in March. So we'll catch you in a little bit. The last house on the left is like the last house on a dead end street. Evil ass shit. We're gonna sell crater than it is in the Riverfield Ten this week. It's the last house on the left, it's near the edge of the park. It's on the beach, on the street. <laughs> I've got some crowded for this shit. I don't want to go sit and have the bug bunch of stink of fox. You know those people in movie theater, they either are annoying with their cell phones or they fucking smell. It's like flea market. Man. A good uh, mix of bleach and ass and body odor. So, uh, your final thoughts, Uncle Bill? Maybe for a while, actually. Yeah, I told you. This is the bottom line. This is the last, last house movie I'm going to. It has to be killer. Or I'm not coming back. And the road leads to nowhere And the castle stays the same And the father tells the mother Wait for the rain Wait for the rain And the road leads to The last house on the left, Dennis Elidius. No relation to the guy that made the shoes. Is it Elidius or Adidas? Or something? That's Adidas, yeah. So, anyway, yeah, um, the people on message boards, they weren't kidding. This is easily one of the better remakes of the last few years. Easily. And we can talk about uh, why that is in a little bit, but I mean, I throughout the entire movie, I enjoyed it. Um, the only thing we'll talk about that in a little bit is the it looked like a tacked-on ending that they added something that was a little silly, but uh, that was it. I mean, I enjoyed it overall. I thought it was uh, it was actually a pretty good remake, and actually had elements that maybe would have worked better in the original movie had they put them in there, but uh, they didn't. Yeah, it was pretty much, yeah, I'll go even farther than what you said and say it's probably one of the best remakes that I've seen. But then again, like, I've only seen two good remakes. <laughs> well, you know, The Thing, so, people are saying it's the best remake since The Fly and The Thing, which... Yeah, I don't know about that. Probably, like, the best one since The Dawn of the Dead remake, something like that. But, the, yeah, like, like I said before we started the review, though, it would really have to impress me for me to say that I like this movie because I hate the concept of it so much. But I have to admit that I really did like the movie. Like overall, it was probably a lot more well acted than the first movie, except for the guy playing Krug who sucked. I mean, he wasn't. What was up with that goatee, by the way? I don't know. <laughs> it's like some WWF would do or something to make somebody a heel. Like he had mange. Or but. Something. Yeah, the thing about it was, was like he was, like David Hess, I don't know if it was David Hess was just that good in that role, or that guy just, he wasn't very charismatic in that role, but the rest of the fucking movie was actually better, I think, in a lot of ways than the original. Well, I mean, the original is always going to have the gritty, grindhouse style look to it, which adds a lot to it. But, I mean, there were, a lot of people were talking about how they're not fans of the original Last House on Left, and I can definitely understand it because it's one of those movies that simply not a lot of people are going to get into. Um, some of the stuff is extremely brutal. Brutal. Yeah, I don't think it went as far as the original Last House on Left. That's the thing, like as far as shock value and stuff goes. 
the original, like I can still remember scenes from that, like where he makes them piss their pants and like he carves their, his name. Makes them their, kiss each other and stuff. Yeah, and, and then the, the woman bites the guy's dick off at the end. Of, <laughs> I was waiting on it. I was hoping yeah, they would bring that in they, this one. I guess they just cannot do stuff like that anymore. Like that's not something that you can get away with apparently at all. So yeah, that like when you watch it, you're kind of like, eh, this is a little bit tame compared to the first one. But, but you does, sort of expect that, though. I mean, but it does, yeah. But it amazingly did have some scenes in it where people in the theater were just like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. Like you just, yeah, you know, the hammer to the head. There's a hammer to the head scene in this. It's amazing. I, I mean, I don't know how they got away with it. Um, and some of the stuff that they did, like the thing at the end, though. I mean, I ain't gonna give it away for people. It was just. To me, I think it was like one of the only CGI um, death scenes, probably the only CGI scene in the movie, and it's just sort of silly. I mean, that's the only thing I. Had. Well, by the time it got to that point, it really, I really didn't want the movie to end the way that it was looking like it was going to end. Though it needed something, like it needed some kind of a, a hook or something to make the movie memorable. That's actually memorable. It's just it's kind of stupid, but like the way it was going to end. I don't know. I wouldn't like that either. It was just like after the first death. He should, he should have just pissed on him. After well, after the first death though, there's not there's nothing else to the movie really as far as like creative yeah kill scenes or anything. But I mean, still like Dennis Aledius, the director, did a I thought he did a great job with the look of the movie, and I was mentioning to Uncle Bill that the the way the movie is shot is very unlike a lot of films that come out today in that it actually is shot like a movie. You know, like something you would see in the um, classic eras, you know, the, seven, the 60s and the 70s. They actually tried to be a little bit artistic with some of the shots and the music and stuff like that. You really stayed away from a lot of like modern rock music and just, it was a movie that really didn't seem like it was made for the teeny bopper crowd like the Friday the 13th movie was. Yeah, I think a lot of parts of it that were in the original that just didn't, didn't make any sense or didn't work were actually kind of corrected. Like, at the beginning, you kind of get a better, like, understanding of what happens in the jailbreak sequence and shit, which in the first one was just like them running out of the jail, I think, or something. Yeah. Um, other parts of it that they wisely left out were just shit like uh, not having the cops involved in it whatsoever, you know? Like in the original, you got the Martin Cove stuff going on. There was none of that stuff. Uh, as far as the forest sequence goes with actual, like that's the part that everybody probably remembers about the original. It was less, a, a lot more tame but it still was fucking for today like people in the theater were shitting their pants like you could hear a pin drop in there really so, yeah. the thing is though the, the what I was thinking when I was watching people's reactions to the, what was going on is the movie doesn't fuck around like a lot of movies a lot of remakes today are just you can tell they're polished and they're just made for like yeah. a core audience but this movie didn't give a damn which was nice to see something else that I wanted to talk about that I liked about it is the original movie this is one part of the original movie that always bothered me Krug's son in the original movie look they looked like they were the same fucking age right I don't know if it's where they couldn't get a kid in the movie or a younger you know 17 18 year old kid in the movie or what and then even the girls in the movie looked a little older and in this one, they don't. They look like they're 16, 17 years old, and that made it a little bit more effective, I think. Yeah, even though, like, I like the idea behind it uh, in the first one that the kid was a junkie. Like, he was being kept in line by, you know, them giving him heroin and stuff, kind of being controlled and yeah. all that stuff. In this one, you're just kind of like, why the, like, other than the fact that he kind of beats up, hits him and stuff, like, you just don't understand why the hell he doesn't just run away or something. Because yeah. he never really, he never really explains like why he stays around him. Really. Yeah. But I mean, 
overall, I think we would both recommend y'all checking this out. This is like the rare exception. People are asking us what our favorite remakes were. I mean, this one has to be up there now. I mean, we mentioned the Dawn of the Dead remake, which was okay. And the Omen remake, which was that. Eh, I don't know. But I mean, this one's definitely, of recent years, definitely one of the best ones, I think. Yeah. Well-directed movie, well-acted movie. Uh, score that I can remember of the score wasn't that bad. And it is sort of a exploitation movie. Hell yeah. So go check it out. I know it got like third place this weekend. Only like 14 million, which is a little bit better than I thought it would do. But uh, definitely, hopefully, word of mouth will uh, get people to go check this out. So uh, that's it. And I guess Uncle Bill's not going to take a temporary retirement, which means we're still going to take a little bit of a break. There ain't nothing coming out for a while. Yeah, we get to go see, uh, I guess, Sam Raimi's Dragon Me to Hell, which amazingly looked pretty good from the preview, which probably means it'll suck. Sam Raimi, though, he don't make too many bad moves, but you don't talk about Sam Raimi. I'll beat the fuck out of you. I'll beat the fuck out of you. Let me tell you this. Sam Raimi's the one who unleashed Katie Holmes <laughs> in the gift. Uh-huh. Yeah, voluptuous titties. Unfortunately, he also unleashed all the goddamn Spider-Man movies, too. I don't mind Spider-Man movies, so. Uh, you wouldn't, because you're a damn idiot. Buddy, you go fuck it. You can go lick my asshole clean. How about that? Why don't you go eat my ass after I jog a quarter mile? Why don't you tongue bathe my dick hole? Won't you stick a popsicle up your own butt, and then I'll make you eat it. Won't you stick a straw up my butt and suck my shit out. <laughs> won't, you take, won't you take an IV into my ball sack. No, I won't do. So until next time, I'm the Creepy Kentuckian. I'm Uncle Bill. You can check us out over at deadbeards.com.